Well, welcome. Wow, that's loud. Uh, good afternoon. I'll keep you awake after lunch because we're in a very small set of corners and you guys have me in the interrogation lights. My name is Sean Wilson. I am a senior product marketing manager for Skype for Business. And uh, joining me today is Anthony Carrigal. Carrigal from our, he's one of our MVPs. And so he is actually up here. He's going to help me with, uh, let's be clear, the hard questions about voice, right? Because we have to look to the, the professionals when it comes to it. But what we're going to do is we're going to walk through a little bit of what uh, it means to plan your cloud PBX deployment. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, provisioning. You're also going to be able to see it, uh, see us actually provision live here. We'll walk through uh, acquisition of numbers. We'll do a bunch in the demo. And then we'll do a little bit of, of talking through a lot of the details. Uh, there's a lot of content. And the, so the one thing I will say is all of this content will be available out online afterwards, not only the recording of this, but also the deck. So you'll have access to it uh, to be able to get the information that you want and you need early on. So let's kind of get started. So let's talk a little bit about the communication errors, right? So, you know, that's if I can get communication to work. Right, there was originally the circuit PBX, right? The original private branch exchange, to a lot of copper, a lot of uh, technical experiences required to get there, and it was, it was, an, it was the uh, onset of really being able to manage uh, voice within, within a company. And, and if you take this to the next level, I'm gonna move to my mouse. If you take it to the next level, we then move to IPPX, right? IPPBX. We now move to where networking and telephony collide, right? And we're now at a point where we are able to distribute uh, voice over the digital signal, over, uh, over uh, Ethernet, and being able to actually uh, change the dynamics and how the PBX actually shows up in the industry. But that really only leaves us with voice. And then we start to move into when we move into UC, and that's really when we start to look in late 2010, where you really brought voice and collaboration and communications at a multifaceted level into that same PBX space, right? And now we get to the cloud, and Skype for Business with Office 365 and the ability to have a cloud PBX tied into your Skype for Business ecosystem as well as a couple of different ways to join that to the traditional telephony uh, ecosystem or, or PSTN network. So let's talk a little bit about Skype for Business. Skype for Business has uh, a number of ways that you can connect, right? The, the first is with Cloud PBX and Office 365 is you're purely online. And we're gonna talk about that where we talk about Office 365, your online users using that PBX functionality in the cloud of Skype for Business Online. And not only that, but also using Microsoft as your, uh, as your carrier, as your telephony provider for PSTN calling. We'll actually walk you through what it looks like as that role today in our demo. The other piece to that is hybrid. Not everybody can just have the wonderful world to be able to say, hey, you know what, I don't have an existing telco contract. Or I meet all the requirements that happen to be for locations that you offer PSTN calling. So, we've actually built a couple of different ways that you can connect either your existing uh, link and Skype for Business infrastructure into that online cloud for hybrid voice, or the other piece to that is also the ability, if you don't have an existing uh, link or Skype for Business on-prem infrastructure uh, using a thing we call Cloud Connector Edition. And then really the other piece is on-prem. You know, a lot of, there's a very large legacy uh, ecosystem that have de delivered Sky, either Link or Skype for Business and they've uh, done Enterprise Voice. And it's a very rich platform that we really want uh, people to continue to use. But as you think about it and you start to think about the unique scenarios that you and your company look at, where do you fit in this model and this journey? So let's talk a little bit about modern voice with Cloud PBX. So how many people here were in the session I did either yesterday or today on the general session? Oh, okay, so we didn't get everybody, go. Cool. So Cloud PBX is the core call functionality that exists, that existed in that circuit PBX, that existed in the IP PBX. It is the functionality that, you know, if you go and think of uh, RFPs that used to be done for voice that have 380 uh, features that tied to business processes that were 30 years old, that's a lot of what, you, what we think of when we think of PBX. But the core call functionalities and the core elements, and I'll show those to you, 
that are existent within the Cloud PBX capabilities. There are two pieces to think of. There's the Cloud PBX functionality. There is the telephony elements of PSTN network, either from Microsoft, from a SIP, uh, from an SBC over SIP, or via an ETA, right, or a gateway, depending on where you are. So one of the biggest pieces with this was our ability to not only take into consideration what it meant to become Cloud PBX, but also simplify what it meant to not only provision users, but also what it took to manage them and that, uh, that agility that's there. Oh, I'm obviously not good with my <laughs> mouse today. So I figured we'd start off with demo, because demo's more fun, right? You really can see it in action. So let's pop in right now, and how many of you are familiar with this interface. Okay, so I've got probably a third. So this is the Skype for Business Admin Center. And what this does is this allows me to control all the elements of Skype for Business from an admin perspective around voice, PSTN conferencing, my capabilities of if I want somebody to be able to reach inside or outside my, my uh, company. But right now there's two things that we're gonna do today. The first one we're gonna do is we are actually going to um, show you what it's like to be able to provision, we're gonna go conferencing first. This is a little bit of a tease because we have PSTN calling, we're gonna talk about that, we're gonna spend a lot of depth in it, but one of the biggest things that we are finding is with the dynamics and the shifting of how businesses are doing and the proliferation of cell phones and people carrying them with them, is that not everybody in a company requires a desk phone anymore. If you think about it, 10 years ago, you showed up at a company your very first day, and there was a phone on your desk. It had a phone number. It was plugged into the wall, and it was most likely running over a twisted pair. Right? And so what you ended up doing is everybody had a phone, and there was a lot more of this one-to-one -one interaction, or if it was group, I dialed into a conferencing group. Well, with Skype for Business, you actually have the capability to say, look, if, if, the, if I have people that don't need to be able to dial out or dial in, then conferencing might be the play for them because they will always work together in voice and video and that communications element, but then also giving them the ability to have PSTN conferencing for dial-in and dial-out capabilities within a meeting. Okay? So being that I'm at Microsoft and I want to go and find a dial-in user, so I've got all of my users there, and we have uh, dial-in conferencing in 90 countries and in 400 cities for locations, okay? Now, I am actually gonna go and find myself in this list. Anybody remember my name? There you go. So there's, luckily there's only one Sean in here, okay? So if I come into here and I, I double click on mine, I will actually go into my profile for dial-in conferencing. Okay. And what you can see is my provider is Microsoft. So if I, if I have purchased E5, Microsoft will be my PSTN conferencing provider. Okay. Now, not only do I have that as a capability, but I also have the ability to choose where I want my conferencing to be. Now, in my case, I would, I'm sitting here in Chicago, and my new office is in Chicago, so, and all of the business I do is in Chicago, so I want my default number to be here. Right? So now, as I go into this and I save this, anytime I create a Skype for Business meeting, at the bottom of it, it will have 312, whatever the number I chose was, the uh, 7548319, as my default conferencing number. Now, we have all those dial in conferencing all over the entire place, but my ability to provision was just that easy. Had I not had a number, I would have chosen the same thing to drop down and add a number. So now you can actually, if we go and take a look back, you'll actually see, waiting, waiting. So I have a question, who here uses an audio conferencing provider other than Microsoft? Okay. How long does it typically take you to get a person a dedicated number in pen? Less than a day. Less than a day, okay. How about less than three minutes? Because <laughs> it just did, right? So as soon as, and you can build this into your automated process for provisioning of new users, right? But at the same point, that would be awesome, but what about voice, right? 
Because how long does it take to provision a phone and a phone number? Yeah, but how long? A day. Anybody else? Two hours? OK. So back in the day when it used to be a circuit PBX, you'd have to go have somebody go punch down. They have to go do a move, add change. They'd have to move the phone, put the phone there, make sure the phone worked, right? Now I can provision it, and now my user not only is, an, is able, if they need a desk phone, you've got one, but more importantly, every device they have is their own portable number. So in the case here, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go here and say, hey, you know what? I see a bunch of New York numbers in Cardiff, UK. I'd like to go get a new number for Chicago. So I come in here, I come down to Illinois. I choose Chicago, I want 312, and I want five numbers. It's working on it. I've acquired those numbers. I now have those five numbers for the 312 area code in my repository of available numbers. How long does it take to get numbers from your current carrier? Okay. Now, going into that, to, to, so you see here are my five, five numbers. Now, if I wanted to, I can actually go in and go to find my voice users. And these are anybody that has actually been licensed for voice, and it's in the licensing portal. And I've got them licensed for PSTN calling and Cloud PBX. Why? The reason is, is because the PSTN calling element is that connectivity to the PSTN network. That's where you get the numbers from Microsoft and Warrior Telco. Now, we're available to do that PSTN, excuse me, that PSTN calling in the US, the UK, France, and Puerto Rico with Spain in preview right now with continued expansion to come. So if you fit within that criteria, that's awesome. You have that capability. But we're going to talk a little bit about maybe those sites that are outside of there. So if I come down here and I come and find my name, and it shows that I've got a 425 number, but I want to move my number to here because I've now become a salesperson in the Chicago market. And I come down here and I go Chicago. Now the other piece here is that you will also have to identify your working location. I haven't added it in here. I could actually keep, let's say that I'm based in Austin, but I do all of my business in Chicago area. So I can actually be, for E911 purposes, be in Microsoft Austin, but have a local number in, uh, in Chicago. So now I've saved this, I've now applied this, and I now have, once this comes back, I now have that number, the 312-248-1463 provisioned on my behalf. So I now have the capability to go and dial out. Now what you're looking at here, you guys are all familiar with this. Well, I want to be able to call somebody else in my office and I know that they are, they have a work number, right? And I don't want to call them on Skype because I'm going to call them on their work phone. So I'm going to call, that's not how the gods are supposed to work. Let's see if I can do it this way and make it ring. By the way, if you ever do demos, test them before you stand in front of 40 people. So what's the number up there? Who wants to read it to me? Yeah. That's not the right one. That's not the one for him. <laughs> Sorry. There we are. Oh. Well, Alex Darrow happens to be in the UK. And we provisioned him in the UK. So plus, or actually it's France, 33185655. Nine six nine nine. Now I have no idea how much this is going to cost, <laughs> but it is dialing France right now. And are you? Is it ringing? Not yet. Oh but, no! Uh, we're all sharing this Wi-Fi, so we're all sharing this Wi-Fi, and I'm not allowed to call France, obviously, from my phone. Why don't we change Alex's phone number real quick? 
So as we continue, and I show this, actually, you know what you could do? You could actually call mine from your phone. Okay, why don't we do that? Since we know that I have that 312 number. 312-248-1463. Now this is assuming that our provisioning is happening within the five minutes. You getting it? It's speaking French. It's speaking French. <coughs> yes, I have not fully provisioned all the way over. Oh, oh, you're it, okay. I can try. Uh, okay. Well, it was it was provisioning me. So three one two. Two four eight, fourteen sixty three. My screen does but still say update. Oh, it does. Where? Right next to your. Phone. There it is. So we now have a phone call going on that I just provisioned in five minutes. Mm -hmm. So as, as we kind of take a look at that and we look at the, the flexibility, now, granted, I just did this on the fly, probably should have looked at my users before I came into the demo to make it smoother. But even in that, we were less than five minutes, right? So as we, as we continue to build this out, you now have an opportunity to talk to your users about how you can enable them regardless of where they are. If they're sitting on their smartphone, they're sitting on their PC, or they're sitting on a desk phone, that number is gonna follow them everywhere they go. And so that's what Cloud PBX, being in the cloud, gives you that flexibility and capability to do. It's not just the old days of, I've got it on my phone, right? Because what happens when you leave your phone? You forward it to yourself, maybe, if you remember to do it. Or if you're like me, when I had them, I'd forget to forward it. I'd go on a business trip and I'd come back with 32 voicemails and not remembering how to log into it remotely. In this case, it follows me everywhere, right? So as we continue to kind of look through it, when we initially launched, there was very key features and functions that we needed to land. And so this actually is um, the organization auto attendant and the call queues and call routing. I'll show you a little bit about what that is in, in a few minutes. But we had the core functionality that we know information workers, which makes up on average 90% of most companies that have phones outside of contact centers, will actually use four of these features on average. Okay. Typically hold, answer and initiate, right? Caller ID, potentially call waiting. But one of the things that it also, or call forwarding, we also have simul ring. Who here knows what simul ring is? Okay. So the ability for it not only to ring my rich client, but also ring my mobile at the same time. If I happen to be, that scenario is just telling, I have myself set to simul ring pretty much Monday to Friday because I'm never sitting at my desk. But if I get a call, I want to be able to answer it, right? So what are the different ways that you can connect? So the first way is obviously the rich client. You saw me answer that within my Skype for Business client, right? I'm sitting at my desk, I answer it. There's the mobile client, which sits on my phone, and I can take it with me, and I can make calls, and I can receive calls on it. And actually, my favorite thing is, is that if I'm in Europe, just like I made the call to France right now and I had to pay for it on my own dime, had I hopped into Skype for business, I can, and it's a business call, I can actually make those calls from my mobile device and not incur the long distance charges. Okay. The, the piece that you also have, which how many people in here say that more than 50% of your users have a physical desk phone on their desk? How many of you think that those people, how many of the same people that raised your hands, those people use it at least once a day? Okay, so I got about half of that. So if you think about the investment of a handset that's anywhere from 50 for a low end all the way up to $700,000, $800,000 for a receptionist phone, right? You have a whole different variety. And so one of the things about Skype for Business is we understand people still need phones. That's why we have partners like Polycom and Yealink. Some of the other things, though, that we want you to think about is when you start thinking about PBX, is 
do you guys remember having to configure voicemail systems? Okay. And I got a snicker, I got a grunt, I got a moan, because they're never, it's never a simple thing. And one of the things with Cloud PBX is it actually uses Cloud Voicemail and dumps it directly into Exchange. Now, we do have some requirements around the voicemail, but imagine the fact that it deposits it for compliance and archiving within Exchange. It's gonna be based on your Exchange policies, right? But it's a new service that you don't have to configure. And it's available in all the different languages because we're localized. I'd say it's important to point out that if, for those of you who may be familiar with Exchange Unified Messaging, this is not that. With Cloud PBX, this is completely redeveloped. Yeah. New bits. And it's, and it's simplified the delivery so that it's not as complex, right? So that it, it, that it comes straight from Office 365. Uh, yes, we'll actually talk about that in just a minute. I'll actually tell you the scenarios that work and, and where it works and what your limitations are in just a moment on Exchange. Okay. Uh, remember I said it was supported in all those different languages? 23 different languages that we support cloud, the, the cloud voicemail. Okay. So here's your Exchange question. You were two slides ahead. but um, So the key is, is it has to be 2013 or 2016, right? You have to establish hybrid, right? and you have to configure your OAuth. And all, the, all of these here are documented on how to do it from TechNet. You also, uh, the, the key pieces here to make sure is follow it to the T. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you don't it, don't, it doesn't work, but then it's much harder to back it up and redo it from scratch. Right, but this is important because uh, traditionally, or actually before this, you had to move to Exchange Online before you moved to Cloud mm -hmm. PBX. And with this change, they're now separate. Yep. You, don't, you can move to Skype for business, you can leverage Cloud PBX right away even if you can, your, your users are still on-premises for Exchange. Yeah. What if you're all online? Perfect, you're done. You don't have to do any of this. You just sign up for PSTN calling, you provision them and you're good to go. Awesome, excellent. Well, and in that case, if you're a worldwide company, how many locations are you? Four in Europe and four here in the United States. Okay, so in Europe, what countries are you in? Belgium, Denmark, the Netherlands, and France. Okay, so you got France, you could use us, but those other locations, you're gonna wanna use the, the, uh, the on-prem PSTN connectivity that we're gonna talk about in just a minute. Well, Europe presents a little like yeah. It does. Oh, in, in your instance, yep. Well, let's talk about, we'll talk a little bit about that as a scenario, because it's a great scenario that we all have to do it. Now, one of the things that we actually did within Cloud PBX was, and I talked about this earlier, is we actually have an SLA for Cloud PBX and PSTN calling to ensure that your phone is up. And it's a 99.9, it's three nines, and the way that we ensure it is it's covered under this, the Office 365 SLA, for availability, um, but it's also a call quality SLA. So as long as if you have a number of calls within, and they are actually, so the, the criteria is it's a hardwired phone because this is the only thing that we know as a true entity rather than your PC that's connected over some Wi-Fi network at Starbucks using onboard speaker and mic. And because <laughs> we know what happens, right? And so it actually, that actually is why we created this call quality SLA. So that customers could feel that they had the confidence in our calling service and it's financially backed, okay? Now, one of the things though that is, that's key out there, who here uses PowerShell? Okay. Who here has more than 10 users, <laughs> right? <laughs> When you start getting into volumes of users, you're gonna use PowerShell to do the mass assignment of numbers, requesting and using numbers, getting those numbers and using them. As well, you've got the ability to do that all within PowerShell. You also have that capability to do it just like I did it in the admin portal, right? And the reason that you make the choice to do it in PowerShell is because you might actually integrate it into your automated onboarding of users as a new employee, let's say you have a complete workflow for your HR and payroll, 
It's triggered, they create the AD, they create the exchange mailbox, they've assigned the licenses, guess what? You also have them go and pull a number. And at that point, if you're on PSTN calling, you, you're set, Cloud PBX is good. Now, who here is familiar with Azure Express Route? Okay. This is an interesting conversation to have, especially with voice people, because they're like, look, I want my, I, I rely on it 100% for my voice. Now, if you're using PSTN calling, I encourage you, if you decide to go PSTN calling with Cloud PBX, I encourage you to, uh, well, either way, either on-prem PSTN connectivity or Cloud PBX, to do the full network assessment from the Skype operations framework. There's two tiers to it. There is the basic assessment to verify that you meet the criteria at a latency and round trip and quality of connection back to the Office 365 data centers. There's another piece to that, and it, it also helps you determine if you potentially have issues that rely within your LAN and WAN, okay? So. And like with any phone system, you know, with, with uh, the media traveling, even if it's staying local to your mm -hmm. environment or it's going uh, up through the cloud, the network's key. When there's call quality issues, it's almost entirely always the network. Yep. So taking the time to plan and get that right is, is really key, as it is with any VoIP deployment. Yeah, or and the key, the, and the reason that we talk about the ter deterministic networking within Express mm -hmm. Route is that if you do determine from a business standpoint, so let's say that I happen to be using PST and calling, but I also happen to be a telehealth care provider and I need to ensure that I have an end-to-end -end quality of service for my telehealth consultations, that might be a business requirement that goes above and beyond what your requirements to meet quality is. As well. Yeah, and that'll get you the QoS all the way up to Microsoft's cloud. Yeah. So, org auto attendant and call queues. So, we everybody in here know what an auto attendant is? Okay, so every time you call in and it says, thank you for calling Microsoft. Please tell me who you'd like to call. Well, that is an organizational auto attendant that, or, that allows you to actually be routed to the right person. So you can use voice or whatever. Later this year, we will actually be releasing the org auto attendant. Right now it's in preview, so you can go to skypreview.com to test it out, as well as call queues, very similar to what we would call hunt groups historically, or, or uh, where if I want to know a group of people that, that are gonna be run round robin or all at once, I have that capability built in to ensure that it's routed to the right people within that group. Typically for this one, a great one for call queues, support and sales teams, right? If they're, if they're waiting for inbound calls, they want it to get whoever's the next one available for inbound. And auto attendant is really key, especially if you were just talking about your uh, America and, you, and Europe offices that you were just about to go to Skype for Business Online. You're gonna want something to be able to answer those calls if you don't have a specific receptionist answering all of your desk on, all of your calls at that 800 number. And so I don't know if you noticed when we were actually in here and we were requesting numbers under the phone numbers portion, it gave me the opportunity also to request a new service number. A new service number would be just that. It would be an 800 number, or it would be a service number for my auto attendant or uh, my um, conferencing, right? So rather than an end user phone number, this is gonna be a, server, uh, a service number, and that's where you would request that. Okay, I guess it's time to do an org AA demo. Yeah. Nope. I keep seeing like the reflection over here and so I look like it's a hand. Did you have a question? Yeah, you asked about Express Route. Um, I mean, I'm familiar with it, but I've never heard of anybody Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it, well, so the key to Express Route, so first of all, with, uh, with with Express Route, the key piece for Skype for Business is you want end-to-end -end quality of service, just like you would on-prem, right? And that's where does your business requirements require that you have that dedicated stood up pipe for Skype for Business, and do you meet the business requirements? If I, if I look at running my assessment tool against your edge to the Skype for Business edge, and I run it 300 times, 
and it hits within the requirements 300 times, there's not, there typically isn't a business requirement that says it's there. The other piece though, is that if you do have a business requirement or you have a security requirement that says I can't have the, I don't want this traffic flowing over the public internet, that's where people would look at Azure Express Route for Skype for Business. Okay. Can you assign yourself a number? Can you assign multiple numbers by working different states, a pack of five numbers, all to one person in the range? No, you, can, you, would, you would be able to assign one. Now, you could actually change that number as we just did for me, but you would assign one number per user. Yeah. Not currently. No, yeah, so at this point, typically what we've done is said we've done things like boss admin, calling, and mm -hmm. things like of that nature if we wanted to have multiple outbound numbers, things like that, uh, and some call forwarding if we wanted to uh, enable those features. What about mailbox accounts? Like an account that just goes straight to a mailbox, would that be considered a service account? Or? Uh, right now, I don't think that there's a special SKU for that. Yeah. For a mailbox account, the, the, when you say for, that would just be automatically goes to voicemail? Yeah. Uh, no, it would, be a, it would be a full SKU that would just, no one would answer. It would go to voicemail. Yeah. So, yeah. Can you have a shared line? Like a common phone? So common, like a common area phone? Okay, so common area phone you can do, and there's actually, so there's a, and we actually talk about it. There's actually a way to set it up. It's a, it's a bundling of elements of a SKU so you don't have to pay for the full Office 365 SKU for that, and we'll walk through that. Just so no shared line? Well, yeah, so shared yeah. line appearance. Um, I don't know if that's hit Cloud PBX yet, but again, it's, there's hunt groups can accomplish that to an extent. Uh, boss admin, boss admin can, yeah. can cover that one, but the actual shared line appearance, I think, is actually later this year. I think we'll show through the roadmap of features. Okay. So if you pick up your phone, and the other person who also may have that line, would they be able to see if you picked up that phone? Well, yeah, they could do that just through presence. So if it'll you have show a, in call, yeah, it'll, you it'll show you phone. in call. Yeah. So if you had a phone, for example, a Polycom BBX, uh, and they're marked as a favorite, you'd be you'd be right on their screen, and vice versa. And if you had the boss admin calling, it would populate there automatically, and you'd actually just be able to see if that person's on a call at a glance. No, you can do it with multiple No, because if you think about it, if I have multiple people pinned as my favorite, so let's say I have the four of us, right, and, and I've got the capability to pick that call up in a boss admin scenario, I would see that you picked up the call or I'd see you pick up the call because your presence would change from available to in call. Because it's going to be assigned to an individual. We just said that you, an individual can only have one line currently. That's where you would use the, the call cues, right? It's like a, it would go out at hunt group and it hits all the phones. You can either round robin it or it can be at the same time. Right, right? so it, it would be difficult to tell if somebody had answered a personal line or a hunt group line at this time. Yeah. Um, I expect that will be exposed to the APIs, but I can't yeah. say that for certain. Yeah. And, and remember, when we take a look at the, the, the roadmap, and you'll see it here, and honestly, I think we should just do the roadmap right up front when we do the sessions, and we just answer a lot of the questions right off the bat. Yeah. But we know, as we came out, we knew that we, had, we weren't gonna go feature parity with the PBX. Doesn't make sense. Modern scenarios don't meet the 350 features that used to be in a PBX RFP, right? But we did know that there are different tiers that we need to hit within the actual uh, cloud PBI or the PBX functionality. And so we're doing it in tiers. And so at, at the first one, it's an information worker level. The next one, it goes branch office level, and then it goes entire org. And you'll see how that steps up in the next. So actually, based on time, I'm actually going to uh, hold off on doing the org AA demo, only because I want to make sure we get through this and be able to answer the, the roadmap questions. If we still have time, I'll come back and do it. But what it is, is it enables me to go create a new organization auto attendant. I can actually apply a service number to that, add 
who, and then if it happens to be my Austin office, it'll call in and it'd say, who do you want to speak to? And because it's using Azure for, voice, for the voice detection and Cortana, it actually, I could say Sean Wilson and it would actually go look for me in the Austin office. Okay? Does that and then it would, uh, within, they have to be a Cloud PBX user. Okay. okay. Like, if they're using Skype, are you going to be using the work? If they have Cloud PBX, it would work because the Cloud PBX would recognize that person and then route it directly internally from that org. But the, they do have to have Cloud PBX. At that point, they do not need to have PSTN calling. Okay. Does that make sense? Connectivity and the cloud. This thing just doesn't like me. Okay, we talked a lot about it. We talked about this as I walked through it. One of the things, though, that we were talking about is when you have PSTN calling, one of the things that's actually nice about it is that if you're using Microsoft and I use it for dialback capabilities, okay? So, prime example. I was sitting in my conference room or in my hotel room yesterday at 4 o'clock to talk to a GM. And I could not get my rich client to connect because, you know, the Hyatt has such great Wi-Fi. And I needed to be able to get it to work. And so it actually called me back on my mobile via our PSTN conferencing. And then I was connected through a traditional PSTN connection, but still able to view the presentation and engage. And everybody on the far side could see that I was muted or unmuted. They were also able to see my presence as if I'm in the meeting. And also it would tell them that I was on a mobile connection via PSTN conferencing. I wanted to reiterate, uh, can you go back one? Yeah. I wanted to reiterate something here. PSTN conferencing is not a part of Cloud PBX necessarily or a part of the PSTN calling plan. So even if you're not ready to move your telephony to Skype for Business Online, you can leverage this right away. Yeah. And it is extremely cost effective. So I, I don't work for Microsoft, I'm a partner, but what we found is there is immediate business value to this, an immediate return on investment mm -hmm. because you have a very low fixed per user per month fee, mm -hmm. so that means no per minute usages mm -hmm. and you're calling domestic. Yeah. There's no call setup fees. Yeah. It's very, very low. And what happens is it eliminates a lot of issues in the enterprise. So you see mm -hmm. things like, uh, typically you see users that are maybe afraid to set up a conference because they don't know what it's gonna cost. Or maybe it's complex. But now they don't have to worry about it because they're just scheduling an Outlook meeting. It's as simple as it could yeah. be and they know that it costs nothing additional. Yep. And beyond that, it's just you end up eliminating a lot of those things like uh, shadow IT WebEx sessions that people yeah. tend to sign up for with their own <laughs> credit card and their own apart departments. Yeah. And, and going back is a lot of the key to this is some users don't even realize that they have this powerful conferencing. Mm -hmm. So they don't realize that this is a very powerful web conferencing tool. Yeah. So you do still see some WebEx out there, some other things like that, but that's where that Skype operations framework comes back in. The adoption, making sure that edu users are educated, but not overwhelmed, but they need to know what they need to know is key when deploying these. Yep. That's actually what we're doing kind of as a phase two for our uh, special business rollout. We're using intercom okay. for our uh, site business yeah. So, So you're using intercall. Now, one of the things, intercall is an audio conferencing provider that plugs exactly. in. So are you paying a per user per month fee or flat rate? Flat uh, user. Okay. So Microsoft's PSTN calling is $4 per user per month. Right? Now, I will tell you right now, just from historically, you have Europe and you have the US. And my guess is you have wonderful procurement people that love you, right? You know what they want? They want one bill. Okay. It comes in on your Office 365 bill. If you ended up going E5. Uh, no, it's on our EA. So. Yeah, but your EA, if you have an E5 SKU, E3 SKU with an add-on, that is automatically would be from Skype for using Microsoft's PSTN conferencing instead of intercalls. It's all inclusive within that fee. Intercall is going to be based on usage. So if you have users that use conferencing a ton, you potentially could be racking up very large pieces. And so that manageability of expectations of funds can be very different amongst different users. And we actually had a customer that had two users that were racking up 9,000 minutes a month in conferencing, and they were paying per minute. Okay. 
when they went to this, they were still, the, it was distributed because what they did is they had those two people handing out their pins to everybody else. You give it to somebody that it's natively integrated into their Skype for Business, what you'll also see is you'll see less people using the PSTN conferencing and now using rich client for functionality. But we are in a PBX session, so I will <laughs> keep going on PBX. No, no. One of the things that I said is that you Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, you, if you're going to, you can't split conferencing. In that case, you would either use your hybrid CAA, right, the conferencing auto attendant, or not hybrid, but your CAA on-prem in the server, or you'd move to the cloud. And that's, that's a different path, right, to what your workloads you'd look to move to the cloud. Because you'd move some of those people that you've got in enterprise voice on-prem, you'd move them to the cloud for some reason, like you didn't have server in their region, right? So, now, let, this is where everybody gets their camera and takes the, the, the picture, and, and, right? Um, so one of the, the, one of the questions that you asked, right here, multi-line appearance, it's in that third bucket, which is really that for, forward going. One of the things we did was when we launched Cloud PBX, our core behind that was we wanted to hit initially the largest possible population we could, which meant individual information workers. However, as part of that, we understood that we needed to be able to take it to the next level, which is where org, uh, organizational auto attendant and those call queues really were the top features. I would say they get upvoted 20, you know, when you can go into feedback and you upvote? Well, this one upvoted like everybody used all their upvotes for those two because it really was what was there. And so that is coming later this year and we're, we're diligently working on it. And it is, if you want to test it out, the call queues, or the, hunt, the org AA, you can actually go and uh, get it through skypepreview.com. Test it out. Yes? Yeah, actually, this is not the up-to-date one. I'll show you the update one. One second. Yeah, why? So it's a, a, it's a hard question because I can't answer all of it because a lot of it's under NDA. But a lot of it is really when, the whole reason we started to do preview, the, the main reason we started to do preview, we did preview was because we wanted to identify any of those gotchas. And anybody that's dealt with voice, we realize voice is challenging and complex and has a bunch of different workflows. And so what we've ident we identified that we needed to be able to solve a lot of the workflows. And so I apologize for that slide because I thought I had changed it out for the one that's in here. So I will show I 100%. Yep. I, you know, I, I, I get it. And I'm not gonna stand up here as like the guy from Microsoft that says, yeah, yeah, well, it's all about quality. It gives you a black eye as well as it gives us a black eye. And trust me, it's the single most painful conversation we continue to have. We do things like this with our customers. We do events like this. We do broadcasts where we share it because that's the timelines that we're getting. And then we find a critical bug that would keep our, it would actually impact our customers. And so at that point it slips. And the amount of information we can share. Are those fixed items actually have to be pushed out at the same time? No, they just happen to be, and they're not, if you read down at the bottom, they're directional guidance and they're subject to change. And that's why this is up here, is because we might find out that, you know, the, the custom dial plans and extension dialing, that the custom dial plans just landed or is landing, isn't it? Yeah, I think they're in preview. They're in preview right, right now, now, right? So those will be different than call queues and, and org auto attendant. Is there a slide that shows what they fix org AA versus enhanced org AA? No, the, it, it's actually uh, enhancements, right? So no, we don't have, see the one thing is these are directional on where we're going. They haven't been stack ranked. It's more the fact that look, we are forward thinking in where we want to go and what we want to do. At the bare minimum, we have what we need to do in org AA and call queues. 
from a, from, a, from a bare minimumly viable product that we need out in the, the public that works. And the service description they will when the service descriptions are delivered. Okay. Service descriptions for those individual items would not be released until right before the release. There'd be preview statements on skypreview.com, but there would not be actual service descriptions. So let's talk a little bit about your, your PSTN options, right? So there's the calling plans that we talked about. And that means you're getting it from Microsoft. However, how many people in here currently have contracts with telco carriers for your current PSTN services or SIP services? Wow, I would have figured we'd have more. So you have a current contract, or you have a PBX, in your case, that just got deployed. However, you want to be able to take advantage of the functionalities of Cloud PBX. Maybe you do another acquisition in Europe, you've got that, but you don't want to put them on that PBX. You want to be able to use it. What you can actually do is actually use on-premises PSTN connectivity, which means that I would actually keep all of my local traffic, my traffic would go from my client and my premise out through one of two things, either a Cloud Connector Edition or Skype for Business Server or Link 2013 Server in some form or fashion. And we'll show you those breakdowns coming up next. Well, there, Skype in a box. There, so the Cloud Connector Edition is essence VMs that have been stripped down just to the core elements. Okay? And that would fall within the PSTN or the on-premises PSTN connectivity. And I actually want to, to get into, because we've talked about the, the calling plans quite a bit, and I'll talk more about them, but I wanted to, well, let's talk a little bit about calling plans. And then I'll talk about on-premises in just a minute. So one of the biggest things about it that we had customers find was that it was all in. It was a single plan. It gave them the ability to do domestic or international. It gave them the ability that because it was pooled across the entire company or the entire tenant for the number of people that did it, because you got a certain number of minutes that were there, that, it, that companies were never actually hitting their thresholds because you were pooling. A couple of the other things that are really nice about it is you just saw the fact that I was able to pick numbers. I can also port numbers from your existing numbers. You can port those over within our service. And you can do that in a couple of ways. One, you can do it where you just do it through, an, through the automated tool and you put in the appropriate information and it pulls over a couple. In larger, like you're a large organization, you want to port a large number, you'd engage with Premier or support ticket to actually go and do that porting process for you, right? So it really gives you that capability from a, from a PSTN calling. There's a lot of benefits to it because it's simple and, and it, it solves a lot of the complexities of having multiple contracts, integration into Skype for Business Online, and it's easy to administer. To that though, there are a couple of different ways that you can, you can look at it, right? The, the one that I want you to look at is in the minutes that are included in the plans, those are not only a, a pool by tenant, but we also monitor them for abuse, right? So one person starts to rack it up. It was interesting. We were in the pilot program for us, and one of the, one of the devs had been using one of our accounts to test an, a bot, and it was making calls, like 350 calls a day, and it took our service less than 48 hours to realize that there was something going on that was not copacetic. And it was international calls they were making. So we are able to see that and monitor that using the intelligent cloud to be able to take care of that. But our calling plans right now are US, the UK, Puerto Rico, France, and soon, because in, in currently Spain is also in preview. So, if you're in those locations, you can use Microsoft for your PSTN calling. And you have the ability to call any of these locations from that. That pretty much covers everywhere, right? Um, there's a couple in there that, that, it, uh, that it doesn't. And there are places that probably don't have very many phones. Right? Um, 
<laughs> you might. Now, this is one of those ones that we were, this was just talking about. There's two ways. You can get them from us, or you can port them. And one of the, one of the key pieces about uh, porting those existing numbers into Skype is that it can be kind of challenging, right? So you have to prepare to port. And don't go and disconnect from your carrier. Understand, though, this is important to understand, your losing carrier, so whoever has your numbers now, has no incentive to port those numbers because it means they lose your business. So making sure you have everything I's dotted, T's crossed, you have all the key information that you need within the, uh, any of the carrier side stuff, the business address, all the pieces that are, that are uh, registered to that number when you do the port. Yeah, if you've ported numbers before, it's the same LOA behind the scenes. So yeah, that losing carrier, they may reject you for the simplest thing just because they want to keep you just a little bit longer. Yeah. So. One of the things uh, that, is, that is key is actually, I don't know if you noticed where I had to choose Austin as my location. You actually have to choose a location within Skype for Business and Cloud PBX to actually use any of the PST and calling. It has to have an emergency location that's been verified and you actually enter that in when you do your emergency locations in the Skype for Business Admin Center. Okay. So in the US, it's, it's specific in how we, we address it and the UK and France, France is actually different. They just need it to be uh, the general location of the building. It doesn't have to be the specific uh, address. Now, mobile clients, uh, when they call, they send the 911 location via their 911, not via Skype for Business, right? So. so, and then compliance is key here. So in the field, what we find is there's a lot of people that just are not compliant. And 911's expensive. You know, they'll, they'll have you know, their third party PS Alley provider, and maybe that's another SIP trunk, maybe that's another PRI line, and it's expensive. Maybe it's out of date, or maybe they're trying to do something where they've just got an address assigned to a phone number, but this is the UC world. And somebody can take their laptop, or somebody can take a, a boy phone and just literally walk to another building and plug it in and have it work. But now their location's messed up. So included in this licensing is E911. Microsoft's going to take care of that for you. Now, if somebody grabs their laptop and they go to Starbucks, they've got their headset, or they're using uh, whatever, and they need to make that 911 call, the call will actually be intercepted by a qualified 911 operator and they will make sure that the emergency dispatch you're calling from, that the address you're providing is the address for the dispatch you're going to get to. Because it's extremely critical, you know, not just to protect your employees and their health and safety, but to protect you from lawsuits and other issues, regulatory issues. So you have the ability to change your outbound caller ID so that it's not your service number. One of the things in here, this deck is available. So as you go to do this, all of these policies are actually available on support.office.com and tied to this. But it's, it's important for people to know that if you want your caller ID to say anonymous, that you can actually set that. We know that because I have, we have people at Microsoft, Satya Nadella, who would not want somebody to have his direct dial into his desk, right? Me, on the other hand, I want all of you to have my direct dial. Yeah, didn't you just see it? It was 312. <laughs> um, one of the things that's actually key that was required and actually gives us the capability is directly within the admin portal, I have the ability to see reporting for my PSTN usage by user and by, like at the call level, call detail worker level. I also, who I blocked from that level as well. And, and the reason for this was because it, and it gives us all of that was, how many people here have to do call reporting? Okay. And it's your favorite thing to do, right? I don't do it. Yeah, if somebody else does it. You're going to have them the ability for them to ex export the Excel or tie into that data pipeline to pull it out on a monthly basis. So let's talk about my favorite topic, mm -hmm. which really is going to be the largest possible option for us, which is going to be on-premise PSTN connectivity. The piece with PS, on-premises PSTN connectivity is 
How many people in the room have Link 2013 or Skype for Business Server on-prem in the room? Great. The four of you are going to, or the five of you, have the capability right now to plug right into your Skype for Business Online ecosystem, move users to the cloud, and have them use a direct connection to your PSTN connectivity through that server. However, for the rest of you, which was the majority, you don't have that. And so what you, if you wanted to be able to be in Belgium, or you wanted to be in Japan, or wherever you wanted to be, or you want to be in the US and you already have a carrier that's providing you a SIP trunk that you've still got 18 months on, you could actually use the Cloud Connector Edition. And what that allows you to do is actually host that PSTN conferencing on that stripped down VM. And in a minute, he's going to get into the nitty gritty of what that Cloud Connector Edition looks like and how it can be built. But really, the key behind that is, is it gives you that connectivity to your PSTN. The signaling goes to the cloud. The media goes to the local connection, right? Does that make sense? I got some nods. I got some naps. <laughs> Not as many as I thought. Some of the people that are over there. Now, if you take a look at, at this, where somebody has their existing telephony infrastructure, this is that whole conversation I was talking about. You're going to want to connect your Skype for Business software, which in this case could be server or CCE, and Office 365, and you're set them up in hybrid, right? And then you're going to have your PC is going to run with the signaling to wherever they're home, to either homed on prem or in the cloud. And then, but their media will always flow from your existing telephony infrastructure, an SBC, a gateway, a PBX. And that's going to flow locally to your PSTN ecosystem, right? The, the, it, the benefits of this is it's bring your own carrier, right? So if you have a carrier contract and you can't get out of it, you can bring it. The other piece to this is, is it also allows, if you have that server deployment and you have some customizations on that server deployment, you have the capability to keep some of those people on-prem and some of them in the cloud and some of those, those customizations. <laughs> But the nice piece about this is, is as you move to the cloud, you get to do what? I know it's Friday afternoon, guys. Help me out. It's right here at the bottom. You get to reduce your server footprint, right? We, had a, we have a customer that had, it was a global customer. You all know them well, but I can't share them. But they had all of their data centers in the Western United States, one in Oregon and one in Sacramento area, okay? And they had Asia Pacific and they had North America. Well, at that point, they wanted to be able to take advantage of using this hybrid scenario of moving their APAC users into the cloud and being able to use it in a split domain. They could communicate with each other. They were all connected, but then they used local, they used uh, local connectivity by putting up a small server pool there just to run the voice pieces for Japan and APAC. Now, there is a thing that has to, that, that we like to talk about, and that is with Cloud Connector Edition, and that is you currently cannot have Skype for Business Server or Link Server and Cloud Connector in the same topology. Does that make sense? If you have a Skype for Business or Link 2013 server and you want to do on-premises PSTN connectivity, you can't have CCE at the same time in the same topology. It's a one or the other environment. Okay. So one of the, the pieces here that you really get to look at is there, there's different scenarios, right? There's the existing customer server pool. That was the one we just talked about, right? But you could go and build a new server pool if you wanted to. Sure. Because you wanted to take advantage of things like Viz or other on-prem. Or maybe you have requirements like call recording or some yes. other things that just aren't quite yet available. Yeah. So you might build out that server pool. Or you just need it for the telephony connectivity. And that's where you would use Cloud Connector Edition. Okay. Now, somebody said Skype in a box, right? So our partners have actually are offering Skype for Business Server software or the VMs packaged into an existing SBC gateway 
box all in one so that, that it's simplified and, and you don't have as much uh, overhead, I guess, is the easiest right. way. It's, it's, you've, it's got your gateway, your IP gateway with maybe PRI lines or, or SVC connectivity, but it actually has virtualization inside. Mm -hmm. So it could either run Skype for Business software ser or server software, uh, the traditional Skype for Business server, or it might actually run CCE. There's different flavors available, but it makes CCE as easy as it is to deploy even easier. Yeah. Because the gateway, there are a number of gateways. Sonos and Audio Codes both have gateways. Both have the, the appliances, partner appliances. Okay. This is where you get to talk. Okay. <laughs> See, now I bring in the guns. And all the questions he has to answer from here on out. Okay. So if we're going to compare, you know, when should you be using uh, a new customer server pool versus Cloud Connector Edition? And these are kind of some of the, the I won't say minimums here, but if you were to deploy with the, uh, you know, your standard recommendations here. Uh, if you're just going to do PSTN connectivity, you know, all you want to do is continue to leverage your existing trunk, uh, or maybe even have that call flow out through your existing IP PBX if you just wanted to light up a few users. CC is really the way to go. It's the simplest thing you could do, uh, and you can just light that up on your own. You get a 1U server that meets these requirements. You download the bits from Microsoft for free, you run it, and you're good. Uh, but if you have anything a little more complex than that, uh, things like, like I said, you wanna, maybe you want to have an a on-premises contact center that's a little more advanced than some of the cloud contact centers, or uh, you have some customization that, you've, uh, that you're looking to build or you're looking to buy from a partner, then maybe having a, a, a new customer server pool is right for you. But keep in mind that that's going to be more complex, a more complex deployment, and there's going to be a lot more planning around that. There's also going to be a lot more day-to-day -day maintenance on that. One of the things about Correct. Cloud Connector Edition is that the updates come from the cloud. It's really a cloud-connected solution that's been streamlined, right? Mm -hmm. So when you get into a full server pool, you now are having to maintain all the functionalities that exist within the server pool. And then you also talking about concurrent calls, right? Right. So yeah, concurrent calls. So if we're looking at this diagram, we're looking at a very scaled-down server pool here. So Cloud Connector Edition, built at your, your standard specifications. Now there's actually two different scenarios. There's the full specification where uh, you've got the 64 gig RAM box, and that can support up to 500 concurrent calls, and you can have multiple ones. So you need more than that, more than 500 concurrent calls, you can stack them. And you can have them in different regions. The Out of the box, if you have a co-located mediation server on a Skype for Business server pool, if you chose to go that route, as long as you co-locate it, you're going to have 150 concurrent calls, which is not as much. Uh, maybe that's OK for uh, maybe a smaller office, or maybe that's OK for your premises, or however. Or, if you or do, even a region that. Exactly. Um, if you do need to scale that up, it is possible, because of course, Skype for Business can scale up indefinitely. Skype for Business server, you could go to enterprise versions. You could uh, install the mediation server on other roles and scale up to uh, 1,500 per server if you'd like. Um, but typically, the choice is pretty clear. If you're looking for straight PSTN, you just want to connect to your existing carrier and move on, Cloud Connector Edition is the way to go. Yep. And, and to, to that point, as you look at this is, not that we're saying don't go build servers. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is if you are looking to connect it to your existing telephony, Look for the one that you're most bang for your buck with the least overhead. The whole reason for going to the cloud is so you can focus on things that create better, better business value than patching and updating, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, CC will do that for you automatically. It uh, doesn't need to be connected to your Active Directory infrastructure. It's really Skype in a box. Yep. Right. Server pool prerequisites, if you're going to uh, go this method, you do need to be running at least Link Server 2013. You are going to need to have an Edge server with a third-party <laughs> certificate. You're going to need to be able to connect that up to Office 365, set up your hybrid scenarios. And you're going to need to have the uh, mediation role, of course, uh, co-located. That's where your 150 concurrent calls come in, uh, or separated if you need a little bit more. You'll need that uh, tested PSTN infrastructure. And of course, this one does connect to your Active Directory, so this is, this is Skype for Business, Link Server 2013 on-premises as you know it, 
with that hybridized component that connects to, uh, to Skype for Business or Skype for Business Online with the shared address space. With the Cloud Connector Edition, I mentioned there's, there's kind of two ways to deploy this. You've got your, your, full, your full path, which is the 500 concurrent calls, and that's your 64 gig RAM box uh, with, uh, uh, with three gig internet or three gig ethernet connections and all that. But if you don't quite need that much, maybe you're uh, deploying a branch office. This is, uh, your, uh, maybe you, you're using Microsoft PSCN calling services, but you've got a, you've got a European office and Cloud PBX is there, but PSTN calling's not there yet. This could be a great option. This is a great option. That uh, 50 yeah. simultaneous calls, you can use a scaled down model of this, uh, where you only need 32 gigs RAM, you can run it off a single NIC, uh, and it's much, much easier to use. And remember, one of the things to take a look at, though, when you look at this, is that you have to also take into account this requires the appropriate planning. You might find that you don't need more than 50 concurrent calls, in most locations, because you're not a big sales office, you've got, you know, it's an accounting, it's a regular office with accounting and operations, and so you might be, you might have a number of people, but your simultaneous calls is in the 15 to 20, and you look at the peaks from your existing PBX call detail records, right? So make sure that you're doing the appropriate planning as you think about the right way to go. All right, and that's, that's again, sorry to keep plugging Skype operations framework, but that's really where it comes in. Uh, a lot of times we see uh, in the field, we see people approaching this as a uh, as another IT project, you know, another server application, and you can't you can't approach it that way. There's so much business invested in this as well. There's a personal relationship with telephony. There's a lot of relationships that are made over the phone, and there's business processes built around that. You have to explore that. You have to plan for that. You have to understand how you're going to maybe improve or enhance that, uh, and you need to make sure that adoption is paramount. Yeah. The more adoption you're going to get, that's where your business value is. So, question: If you have uh, an organization that is in the midst of transitioning, they have enterprise boys at one site and they have some other sites that they acquired and they're just using traditional PBX. Saying there's an on-prem like business deployment that you can actually use the So, if you had tech service in one part, where it is in another site, you'd be like, well, can you, you have to actually go server in that location. Yes. Okay. Right. Now they could use your, there's, there's, there's things you could do. You could put a mediation role in a gateway just in that one branch office and use your existing Skype for Business deployment in another office, uh, or you could put standard edition server out there. But as long as standard edition is in your, or enterprise edition, if Skype is in server is in your deployment in your forest, you'll want to keep using that. So we've got probably about seven minutes I didn't think that we would get that close. Uh, but I figure there's going to be questions, and this is a good time. So go ahead. Um, how about uh, anything on the roadmap for more advanced case automatic call distribution? Yeah, so there, there's uh, the, the answer to that is there will be a roadmap item for that. There's nothing determined for when and what to what the spec is for it. So if we're talking about sorry, Good. if we're talking about ACD in terms of contact centers, there are already a couple of contact centers that will work with Office 365 in the cloud with Skype for Business mm -hmm. Online. Like third party, yeah. third party, yes. Yeah. And uh, furthermore, there are APIs. Uh, as Sean mentioned there are APIs being developed and will be made available uh, that will help you uh, help you as well if you had some in-house enhancements or capabilities you wanted to run. And also, well. you'll see more partners going now that we'll be moving into this. I mean, you figure, we've been doing this for a year with Cloud PBX, and we've continued to bring features. The, the big one around the, the ACD and the call centers is contact centers were required us to have uh, some APIs to allow them that back and forth that existed in on-prem, but live very differently when you go to the cloud, so we had to re-engineer. So we're actually releasing those APIs here shortly. For those partners, uh, I think actually I believe they're actually on the Partner Solutions catalog on SkypeForBusiness.com. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, so typically there's you grab a third party application for that. Uh, you could grab something like uh, sometimes that comes with the contact center. 
Uh, and typically, typically that's where a contact center would come in, and a lot of them will do exactly that. Uh, if you weren't doing a contact center, you're just using built-in Skype for Business response groups or hunt groups. The, then you could uh, leverage product like Audio Code Smart Tap or, or something like that that could record those calls for compliance, yeah. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> so we don't, currently we don't give you the option to pull the specific numbers you want. We, but you can pull numbers and if they're not, you have, as you saw, I had the availability to pull 75 numbers within a certain period of time, right? Because of the number of licenses I had. So if I, if I got them and I was like, really that whole, like this whole thread is 312666, whatever, and I don't want that, then you could potentially pull more numbers, right? Um, but our ability to specify and look through numbers right now is not an option. Yes? Did, did I see um, a feature listed? I forget where it was, but it, it looked to me like it might be like four digit dialing. Yeah, extension dialing. Yeah. yeah, so extension dialing is coming. Here, let's just let's go back over to the other. So extension dialing is planned in this next half. Yeah, I think it's hitting, uh, I can't say exactly if it's in preview or it's just about to hit preview. Uh, but if you've worked with Skype for Business on, or Link 2013 or even Link 2010, you've seen those regex expressions to build out your dial plan. Uh, it looks like that's exactly what we'll be able to do. We'll be able to create a custom tenant dial plan and assign that to a user, just like a policy in the cloud. Okay, and that would be across locations, presumably, and it would care about where the person's home is at, right? I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to confirm right now because I don't, I, it's not out. No. Yeah. It's not out yet. It's, in, it's either literally landed in preview in the last 48 hours or is coming shortly. So, yes? What uh, licenses are the PSPN available? Only in like the D3 or E5? Or yes. So if you're on Link on, if you're on Skype plan two, that's an ESKU. However, if you are in business premium, you can't get any of the voice or PST and calling. You have to be in an enterprise SKU. Or in an academic SKU that has purchased the upscale and the same thing for the nonprofits in the ESKUs. So you can miss now if, if the enterprise version is getting kind of that way? I'm not sure. Is it? So I, honestly, I, last time I remember, I had to like forklift an entire tenant when I was doing this because of that same issue. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I know we're doing a lot of work within our analytics. I don't know about the like queues and the the live what what's sitting in the queue, like the, that's what you're talking about, right? I like, really like I'm sure an admin can go in, but most likely the sales side or business or even yeah. running a call center. So that's currently not pulled together. Okay. Last question. <laughs> So, okay, well, the call quality, where we referred to the call quality SLA, it actually is around network MOS, jitter, round trip, and packet loss, right? And those, if they don't meet, and I don't have the, the SLA, you can grab it right off of Office 365. It actually has it listed, what our call quality SLA is. But if you're talking about the subjective, right? I don't know, I'm using it every day. I sit at Microsoft, my, my phone number sits in, the PSTN calling in the US, I use it every day. And I've got most of my sales folks using it every day. You don't have to say why, why, why. No, I mean, no, because the fundamental thing is, is that we all live in a world with where we're using voice over the wire in some form or fashion, right? And so you might have network locations that have really big constraints on the network, 
either from a ISV, an ISP perspective or even your local WAN and egress. Well, if that's the case and you have problems, you're gonna have that regardless of what you're using to, unless you're just using good old fashioned copper, right? Now, and that's voice over the wire and that's why QoS on your own WAN is important because that's also some of your weakest link. The internet, once you actually get onto the superhighway, now if you're in rural parts of Iowa, it might take you a while to get onto the superhighway. But once you get on the superhighway, you tend to not have horrible experiences, unless you're at the Hyatt here. <laughs> Where I literally could not, it was the download, crystal clear. I could hear my colleague clear as a bell. He heard one out of every 80 words. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's always determinant upon the network when you go to a voice solution. Right, and, and what I say is that that's where your network assessments are key, but before you go deciding that you absolutely have to have express route, take some time to, to really look at your network and see, because this is using the Silk protocol, you know, that, that you know, when, when Microsoft acquired Skype, that comes with it. And the Silk protocol works very, very well. It's intelligent, yeah. even in poor network conditions. So even on saturated Wi-Fi floating around here, I've been making calls all day, <laughs> And I really haven't had an issue. And you know, one of the one of the biggest pieces that you think about is, and and it's really how we've changed in the dynamics. We used to sit at a desk and expect we picked up the phone, we had calls. Now we uh, our salespeople are having conversations with CEOs on their cell phone driving down the street. Fifteen or ten years ago, they never would have done that. Five years ago, they still would have been concerned about the quality of that call. Now you're thinking about how we've changed the dynamic where I might be on this, and I might not choose because I don't trust the data network to use the cellular network to call me back, right? So, you know, I know it sounds like an ambiguous way to answer your question, but the fact is is that we're, we're running calls over the wire all the time right now anyways. And our quality when it hits, the, hits, the, hits our network, it's QoS end to end as soon as it hits our network. So, and you can you can QoS it all the way to cloud PBX from your work premises if that's that's a requirement. That's where ExpressRoute comes in. Thank you guys. Have a great weekend. <laughs>